there is one thing that if everybody does, we are absolutely sure the result will be a better world. It's just one simple thing, which is everywhere you go, everywhere you pass, you leave it better than what you get. That's as simple as that. Brazil is the fifth largest greenhouse gas emitter on the planet. So if we want to tackle climate change uh, from the angle of Brazil, and for that matter, most of the tropical countries has the same reality, we need to really focus on the, the land use. So my piano starts from a question that we had, which is what's going on with the land cover land use in Brazil? To make one map of Brazil with a lot of details on land use takes 18 months. That's the reason why worldwide people make maps of land use every 10 years or every seven years or something like this. If we don't understand what's going on every year, we, do, we don't capture really the transitions that are happening. And so we sit down and thinking about like, how can we actually produce that? Is that any way that we can do it? And so the innovation of Mapiomas is to assemble a group of people from different places, different backgrounds. So there are people in universities, in NGOs, in startups, in technology, to put together an effort to be able to tell the story of the land use, how land use transformation in, in Brazil. And the way we come up is actually to divide Brazil in pieces of 30 by 30 meters. So there is 9.6 billion pieces. And each piece, we tell the story. And we do this at the same time you know, in time and space. We tell the story of each pixel all together. So every year we produce three decades of information of land cover land use that can be used by tons of organizations to produce impact. Every week we have 10 to 15 new publications in peer-reviewed magazines and so on with data from Mapiomas. None of them are from our team. When you see water surface and how water is changing, normally you get this impression that, okay, during the wet season you have a lot of water and during the dry season you have less water and then eventually it's kind of a one balance to the other. And we had the sense that something was going on in Pantanal, which is the largest wetland in the planet. Once we made the maps of every month since 85, every month we have a, a map of Brazil and then we could see what's going on in Pantanal, we saw that the Pantanal lost 60% of the water surface in average. And Brazil lost 15%. We were so abundant in water that we were not realizing that actually we are losing the water and very fast. We make maps of the burned area, like the scars of the burning, again, every month since uh, 85. And we find out that 20% of Brazil have a red burned at least once. It's like a strike, like it makes the fires in California or it, even the fires in Canada, like, yeah, it's big, but it's nothing comparing to what we have in terms of fire happening in Brazil or for this matter, also in Indonesia. So these are things that are opening our eyes for how our perception of this thing is sometimes completely disconnected with what is really actually happening. If you look at the story of the occupation and, um, and the use of land in the Amazon, by far, but really far, the most protected areas are not the areas without human beings, like national parks. It's actually the indigenous lands and the lands with the, what they call the black communities, the quilombolas. These areas, they are more than 25% of the Amazon, but they are less than 1% of the deforestation. And most of this deforestation happens before their rights were recognized. So I think it's extremely important this because it shows that actually the way we solve this question of destruction of the environment is not to make us a part of that. It's actually to join with the forest. It's, it's by aligning ourselves with, with the forest that we'll solve the problem. So I always say to anyone that's dealing with anything related to the Amazon say the solution is not to avoid the Amazon. The solution is actually to pack into the Amazon to be part of what's what's going on there. It's not like I don't buy products from the Amazon because this is bad. No, no, it's the opposite. Let's find a product 
from the Amazon that is compatible with the forest because that's what will save the forest. I mean, that's part of the positive stories. As we progress of producing this type of data and starting to answer to specific requests of new data, we find out that the most important part of what we are doing is actually not producing the maps at this point. It's actually to create the capacity on every single tropical country to produce this data and to answer any question that people may have related to land cover land use. And the click for that was in the beginning of this year, very early this year, we have a crisis with the Yanomami people. It's an indigenous group in north of Brazil dying because of the contamination of the rivers with the gold miners. And, so, and we have to take a lot of gold miners inside of the reserve. So the Air Force went to close the airspace. But to close the airspace so the guys can't, can't fly into the indigenous reserve, you need to know where are the airstrips, right? And so the map that we have in Brazil shows 1,200 airstrips in the whole Amazon. But we knew that there are some airstrips that were not in the maps. The guys that produced those maps in Brazil and the, the government, they would need 18 months to produce the new map. And very expensive and etc. And so the guys in our team were kind of watching one of the groups. They were working, watching this and, and like three guys and they sit down and say, maybe we can do this, you know, that, just do this map. So they quickly figure out a solution based on the technology that we use on day by day. And in three weeks, they produce a map showing 2,880 airstrips in the Amazon, more than double of what they had before, just like that. And once it's produced, out, anyone can use. And so this gives us, for me and for our group, let's say, this is actually our role. Our role now is to guarantee that this same ability is actually present throughout the tropics and people can answer for these questions. So this is my drive and my challenge right now is how we can multiply this very fast. We are in all South America and in Indonesia, but we have to go to you know, Central Africa and other places just to guarantee that we have this capacity out there to help decision makers.